what is right, and I'll obey the Lord. Come on. I think of how many Christians there were during, you know, the civil rights movement. Can you imagine how much courage it must have taken for that little lady, right, who had to sit at the back of the bus to one day say, no, I'm not going to sit in the back of the bus. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ, and I've been, I've been made free, and I'm going to live free. And so they moved from the back of the bus to the front of the bus. How many of you know that took a lot of courage? Come on. And I'm just saying to tell you today that we've got to trust in the Lord like that. You know, there are, there are groups of people in our inner cities today in certain parts of the world where Christians have gathered together and they have formed watch groups. Watch groups. And they watch the neighborhood. Community watch groups. And sometimes they have to stand up against gang members and drug dealers. Let me tell you something. My hat is off to them. Am I right? And let me tell you something. God wants us to be a witness for Him everywhere that we go. Amen? Amen. I... I, I <laughs> You don't know a lot about me, but I, I'll tell you, I've, I've been in trouble with the law a few times, all right? You know why? Because I dared to share food and the gospel with some people that were standing around looking for a job. All right, the INS has my name, all right? The police department took down my name. They threatened me with arrest if I was going to preach the gospel on the street. Well, guess what? I went back the next day and preached it as well. Why? Because the gospel needs to be preached. Amen. Amen. And then there's another decision that Moses had to make. That decision had to do with who he was and what his identity was going to be. The first 40 years of his life, he lived in a place of luxury in the palace as the, the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But there finally came a time when he was about 40 years of age where he had to make a decision. Stephen writes about it. He says this, he says, And Moses was learned... In Acts chapter 7, it's written, it says, And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in word and deed. Now when he was 40 years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended and avenged him who was oppressed and struck down the Egyptian. And if you know the story, you know, he thought, wow, they're going to realize that I'm here to help them. But the next day he went out and they said, are you going to strike us down too? It produced fear in him and he wound up having to flee. But you know what he did? He decided that he was going to identify himself with the people of God, with the people that he, he knew that, that God had sent him to and with Jehovah God. And that's the second decision that we've got to make as believers, all right? How many of you are still with me today? We have to make the decision to identify with God and God's people. Today, that decision in the United States of America doesn't really cost very much. It might cost you a few of your friends. Uh, if you decide to really sell out to Jesus, your family, some parts of your family may laugh at you a little bit and make fun of you. Or, or like um, our brother Jose Gonzalez, he gets called Osteen at work uh, from time to time because he's a little preacher man over there. I salute you, man. God bless you, brother. Amen. We're, we're proud of you today, right? Amen. But actually, to become a believer in America doesn't really cost a person very much. How many, how many of you realize that in other countries, it may cost everything? It may cost them their family, their job, they become an outcast. And for Moses, it was a very costly decision. And I want to enumerate some things that Moses chose, all right, today. The first thing he did was he chose the people of God over the prestige and the power of Egypt. Notice what it says in Hebrews 11, 24 and 25. It says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now imagine what it must have been like to have all of, all of Egypt, yours. Wow! I mean, as Pharaoh's son, he was a prince. He was esteemed. He was treated exactly the way any grandson of the Pharaoh or any son of the Pharaoh would be treated. He had all the education. He was going to be given a position of prominence, uh, of power and esteem. And everybody wanted to be him because when he walked into the room and snapped his fingers, everybody just lined up and said, what is it that you want? But the Pharaoh, and, and, and the Pharaoh's daughter called him his son. But one day... The, 
Moses decided that is not going to be my identity. My identity is going to be who God has called me to be. He said, I, that is not who I am. I am not the son of Pharaoh's daughter. I am a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. I will not be called a, a, an Egyptian anymore. I would rather align myself with my own people and with God. But Moses, you don't get it, man. Don't you realize they're slaves? They can't help you. They can't do anything for you. You're going to become an outcast. He said, that's okay. I choose them. How many of you realize today that it's by far better to align yourself with the King of Kings than the Lord of Lords than to have the highest position in all of the country? Good preaching, Pastor Bob. Secondly, he chose the people of God rather than the passing pleasures of sin. Hebrews 11 and 25 says this, Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. One can only imagine the type of sinful things that were available to someone like Moses. Wow. Wow. How many of you know wealth and power brings its own temptation? Am I right? <laughs> Those who have a lot of money fall into a lot of temptation. And it was the same in that culture, I'm sure. He probably could have had any woman that he wanted to be given to him. I, I don't know whether there was drunkenness in those days or whatever. Uh, certainly worshiping other gods was a, was a sin. But Moses said, look, I am going to choose to identify with God's People. And that meant for him that, that was gonna, he was going to uh, suffer affliction, be an outcast. They couldn't help him. But Moses said, that's okay. I choose them. And this is what I believe today. If you write anything down today, please write this down. Believers ought to hang out with other believers. Do you believe that? Believers ought to hang out with other believers. Now, I'm not saying we should never associate with people who don't know Christ. Certainly we should. We should invite them to our house. But let me tell you, we cannot live like them, act like them, talk like them, do exactly the same things that they do. We've got to be an example to them. Amen? And I'll tell you, there's a moment in life when you've got to decide who your identity is going to be. Are you going to continue out there with uh, your party friends? Or are you going to decide, I am going to be who God called me to be and I'm going to identify with God's people. Everybody has to make that decision. Now remember many years ago uh, there was this guy right here named Bob and my girlfriend Jereen we were driving in my 65 Mustang Fastback 2 Plus 2, 289 3 speed, painted dark blue, uh, uh, 68 blue with pinstripes. Okay, I was driving around in Worthington, Minnesota in this amazing vehicle, and we were going to my friend's house, the Eckerson's house, and we were gonna, we were gonna just pull in there and see them. And as we got to the Eckerson's house, they were all hanging out, and there was a, a few other people there that that we knew. And Jereen said these words, I'll never forget. Forget it. She said, listen, I don't want to go there to be with them because they're all going to be drinking and doing things I don't want to be involved in. So I said, okay. We just waved at them and went on by. You don't want to know what we chose? We chose to leave that and go this direction. Now, the amazing thing was that about eight or ten years later, all of us got back together. We were all in our 20s at this time, like in the 23, 24, 25, 26 year age. And guess what? Everyone told a story of this and that and the brokenness and the heartache and jail and problems and difficulties and divorce and abuse and, and abortion and all kinds of things that went on. And let me tell you something. I'm so grateful that Jereen said, let's just drive on by. Come on, somebody. I'm here today to tell you that everybody's got to make a choice. Who are you going to associate with? Are you going to associate with the people of God? Or are you going to still stick it out in difficult times? So who will you identify with? And sometimes identifying with the people of God today could be a little challenging. Am I right? Because guess what? Going to any church in America today, and guess what you're going to find? You will not find people, perfect people. Turn around. Someone said, I'm looking for a perfect church. Don't join it. You'll mess it up. Hello? 
There ain't no perfect church because there's not any perfect people, right? You're going to find people that struggle. You're going to find people who are needy. You're going to find some that have problems. And identifying sometimes with, as we call them, church people may not raise your social status in life. You know, uh, you know, you may not be as popular on Facebook as you were. But let me tell you something, who those people are. Those people that know Jesus, they're the blood-bought church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. They're the eternal family of all my God and I don't know about you but I for one am proud to say that I belong to Jesus and I belong to the church of Jesus Christ come on amen I'm excited about that amen many many years ago my grandmother my grandmother on my mother's side was attending a tent meeting they were having a gospel meeting there and and uh, it was the type, you know, the, the, there was a group of people that didn't want that type of gospel. It was the full gospel being preached with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and all of the supernatural signs. And uh, they, they didn't want that preached in their town. And so they all got together. It was dark at night and they came and all at once they all cut down the tent where they were at. And so the tent went trembling down. And then as they all came out from underneath the tent, they pelted them with tomatoes. Oh, well, my grandmother said that. It's fine with me. I'll be happy to be with the people of God pelted with tomatoes because let me tell you something. I've got Jesus in my life. Come on, somebody. Are you grateful for the Lord? And there's one thing that binds us together. And I'll tell you, it's not our race because the church is made up of every race. It's not our political beliefs because I can guarantee you in this house, we got some Democrats and we got some Republicans. Amen? It's not our economic status because some make a lot of money, some don't make a whole lot. It's not our educational status because some didn't graduate high school and others have two master's degrees. But I'm going to tell you what bonds us together. It's the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Come on. It's the bond of love that's given to us by the Spirit of God. And so I'm going to tell you this. I would say, hey, listen, I'm proud to have a selfie taken with anybody who says they belong to Jesus. Come on. Amen. And it's not just about, it wasn't for Moses, it wasn't just about who he would associate with. It was also about what he was leaving. He said, I'm leaving the pleasures of sin. I'm leaving, let me tell you something. The devil will offer you the pleasures of sin. He will say, oh, you can do this, you can get away with it, it's going to be enjoyable, and anybody who's never experienced sin, uh, you don't know that it's pleasurable. It is pleasurable, but just for a season, come on, just for a little while, just for a short time, because when the consequences come, it's not so fun, amen? And then the third thing he did.